There were some plugin gems found this week, but before we get there, the audio player plugin lets you play audio inside of Obsidian through a code block, and you can see the waveform, but you can also add bookmarks to the waveform, letting you go backwards and forwards, which is really nice for note taking. But at the moment, Web M, which is the format Obsidian automatically records in, isn't available. It has to be an MP3. So, uh, limitation. Ava, or Ava, is the name of the plugin that you can use ChatGPT for, another AI-linked plugin. And as you can see, you can add in a prompt, and ChatGPT will throw out all the words into your Obsidian file. You can then write, rewrite, add to, connect, and create images using this plugin, very similar to all of the other AI-related plugins with Obsidian. Now, when you go to the settings, you do, again, need to create a login or an account for the AI to work inside of Obsidian, and then you have the costs associated, so bear that in mind. The Canvas CSS class requires a bit of code knowledge. You need to understand how to write CSS, so a limitation of this plugin, but if you can, or you just take it from someone else like I would do, you can then use that and change the canvas. And the Code Emitter plugin also requires a bit of code understanding or programming understanding in whatever language, and it lets you render whatever you've written inside of Obsidian. Now, this is great for coders, but I'm not that. Chronology is, however, a plugin all of us normal people can use, and it's a plug and play. You activate it, and then you select the day in the calendar, then it will give you a time slot. And 17 is obviously 5, so at 5 o'clock roughly, I edited those two files, or elements, and when I click on those elements, it takes me to that file, and I basically have a chronological timeline of when I edited files, which can be really useful to navigate. Now, database folder isn't new, I've used it quite a lot, but there was an update that allows you to use DataView.js pages. So those of you more familiar with JavaScript and DataView JavaScript, you can now use that as a database source. And DataView also got an update this week, which allows you to use regular list items and click them in the task view, which can be useful. I find it kind of annoying personally, but uh, then we have the daily note outline, which as you would imagine, outlines the daily notes. So if you're a big daily notes user, you can go to the settings and you can see we've got the basics, search backwards or forwards, change the search duration, change a lot of the search metrics. So is it looking for headings, tags, or anything in default markdown? Then say yes, look for all of the headings or some of the headings. So maybe you just wanna look for just a specific section of your daily note, include or exclude what you want, then inside of the search, you can go through any daily note and find the specific section of the daily note you want. So for those of you using it more like a, an outliner, you can look for that certain section, whether it's a list point or, or a heading point, you can find it inside of the outline, inside the sidebar, wherever you move it to. You can then go to the home page. So what the daily note is, refresh, go back to the settings, create or open today's daily note, and then extract information if you want. Now, the email block for Obsidian is a code block that you put email in. You can format your email, use templated information for email, or maybe even email from Obsidian. But for me, I prefer to just write my emails wherever I'm sending the email. In my case, that's Gmail. But personal preferences. And then GPT is not the same as GPT Notes or any of the other AI plugins, but it does the same thing. Connect your AI and it works like that. Now, Hyphenation is one of those plugins because I'm English, I won't really need, but if you do speak another language or are learning another language, you can use it to help with hyphenation. Link nodes in Canvas does what it says. It allows you to highlight cards inside of a canvas view, then use the hotkey or the command and it links, so it creates lines between all of the highlighted cards. Order list is similar to the to do sort plugin from last week, but works instead of tasks, works with list points. Now, you do need to put a number inside of the list to then it rearrange, which does seem a bit of a friction point for me and I'd much rather just hotkey up and down. Pending notes with a couple of tweaks might be a plugin I actually use quite a bit. But what it lets you do is it searches all of the files that aren't actually files yet. So you know when you make a link, but you don't click it and turn it into a link, it's just pending. Well, it gives you a list of all of those 
pending files or pending notes, but it doesn't quite refresh on startup and it doesn't let you navigate or create the file from the window yet, but still worth having a look at. Now, Projects is another plugin that is fairly well established, but got some updates, lots and lots and lots of bug fixes, which is really nice to see. And a couple of new additions as well, which does make me think it's getting closer to mirroring the Notion-esque views with cards, galleries getting updates and tag data sources also getting updates with the board view. Now, the sentence navigator might be used for those hockey people where you have a cursor and select from the cursor to the end or cursor to the beginning and delete that or move certain sections similar to Vim users. Now, the short internal links to headings, however, I think this should be a core feature. And as you can see, I've linked a heading from a file and it shows me just the name of the heading, not the file as well. If I turn the plugin off, it shows me everything. And I think this applied to the blocks as well would be really nice for the page preview to do natively. Now, Smart Connections is another one of those AI plugins, and it looks for smart connections, very similar to Mem AI, I believe. And what it's trying to do is find connections between the note you have and other notes, and then connect those, i.e. through links, backlinks, outgoing links. But again, because it's AI, it requires tokens, which financial burden. The status bar Pomodoro timer is a timer that goes in the status bar, but now we have system notifications, which is really nice. Task marker plugin is another task plugin that allows you to customize and format the tasks inside of your Obsidian files. You can see we've got different icons at the start, and when we go into the settings, you can change the date format, change the emoji, change the icon, change lots of the settings and the marking tasks using menus, but I personally don't use that many tasks inside of Obsidian. Now, the text format plugin isn't new, but it does cover one of the plugins I shared last week, which was the toggle case. So it does a lot of the features that that does already, plus loads of other text formatting. And as you can see, Zotero formatting is included. Now, this is the plugin you've probably all come here for because, oh my God, this is amazing. Toggle Meta YAML. It's one hotkey. It's one command. It does one thing. It toggles whether you can see or not see all the meta YAML rubbish that's at the top of the file that's annoying to see. I personally combine this with commander so I can add the command, the hotkey, to a button I can push. And you can see I'm adding in that command. Now I'm looking for an icon and just toggle left or right, one or the other. Then once I've added that, I'm going to rename it and just rename it metadata so I know what the toggle does, save it, and now, at the moment it's the status bar, you can put it where you want, if I click that button, it hides it all. All of the metadata, the YAML, the front matter, whatever you want to call it, it's hidden. I turn it off, and then when I hover over it, if I, even if I click it, it doesn't show it until I toggle it on, which is really nice so I don't have to see it all. The Vega Visualizations is a chart graph type plugin that uses code blocks and you have to actually configure the code block which is a bit too much for me, far too much effort, I'd much rather get Excel to do it for me but it's an option. And then we have the weekly review plugin, a very nice video walkthrough as well. And this plugin loads up every file you've edited in either the week or whatever days you've put inside of the settings. So seven days is default and every file you've edited will just get put up and loaded so you can go through them all. A friendly reminder, the January sale of the Obsidian onboarding course is closing, so if you do want to see all of the recaps inside of this sort of format and explorations of all the plugins in small details and how I link them into my own workflow, there is information in the description below.